Okay, I'm going to do a quick video troubleshooting the new Electrical Nano when it's a little bit noisy. Your first thing to do is check the motor itself. So nothing attached, nothing on the pulley. Simply plug it in, turn it to whichever direction you like and increase the speed. You see that is almost silent so we've got no problems with knocking from there. One other thing while you're here that you want to check is that this pulley is firmly attached. Uh, if it's too loose then it will slip under load and you will damage your motor. Some people have popped them off and put a little bit of super glue on. I actually can't get mine off now because it's on so tight. I popped it off and wrapped the shaft in a bit of PTFE tape. I'm not sure if you can see down there yet. Just about. PTFE tape round the shaft and over the end, put the bobbin on, uh, put the pulley on and now it's really really tight so I don't have to worry about that anymore. The next thing that could make noise is the flyer. So I'm going to put the flyer on, no amendments, uh, no bobbins, no any extra bits of tape or anything and we'll see what it sounds like. I have actually already sanded my flyer shaft. There's a slight artifact of the injection moulding process just along there and there. So I sanded it with a nail file to make it nice and smooth. Okay, that's all in position, ready to go. Brake band's out of the way because we've not got a bobbin on so we're not using it. Let's see if this makes any noise. So, a little bit. We've got a noticeable wind whooshing noise. You're never going to get rid of that's what happens when things move through the air. But there is a little bit of a bang. So we'll see what we can do about that. If we have a look, we know Bobbin. The only things that have any play to move are where these bearings sit at the end. You see it can move from side to side just a tiny bit. So we'll try and dampen any movement there and see what happens. I have this, which is just a little bit of brush cotton fabric. It, uh, if I had felt, I'd use felt, but I don't, so this is the closest thing. I've cut a couple of teeny strips of it that are the same thickness as the channels here. There you go, so you can see they just fit inside those Channels where the bearings sit nicely. So we'll try putting this back and see what effect that has. Okay, already you can see there's far, well, there's no play in that. These are nicely firmly seated, so hopefully that'll make it a little bit quieter. There you go. I'm happy with that. A little bit of motor noise, a little bit of wind whooshing noise, no other noticeable clicking. Right, next step will be to add the bobbin and see what happens there. First I'm going to show you what I've done to the flyer, which I think most people have done. These hooks were rotated outwards when it arrived, which meant the path the yarn took would go from a hook and rub on the flyer. To stop it doing that, I've just put a screwdriver in each of these little screws and twisted so the triangle is vertical and these eyelets are able to put the fibre straight on the bobbin without rubbing on anything. They're not quite parallel, but uh, it doesn't matter because it's symmetrical. So. Uh, I could mess with them, sand a bit down, make them perfectly parallel, but I'm just going to leave them there completely fine as they are. Okay, bobbin. A few people have noticed that with their bobbins, put one end on, push it nice and firmly, it stays in place nice and firmly. That's what you want. The, oh, sorry camera. The other end, not quite as firm. It, uh, 
spins around you may end up if you've got too much tension with this bobbin slipping a little bit and you'll be wasting some of your motor energy moving the bobbin you don't want that so quick fix and an easy way to get a leader on get your leader yarn put it down the end of the bobbin so it's in place and snap that on now that's far firmer and it doesn't twist and your leader's nicely attached so it's not going to slip before I put the bobbin on, I'm going to deal with the flyer shaft. You can see if I line this up, the only places the bobbin will be touching the flyer shaft is about there, about there. So I'm going to make those places extra, extra frictionless, smooth and shiny, by putting a little bit of this tape on. Uh, any shiny smooth tape will do. Okay, this bit's going to be a bit boring while I find the end of the tape. Okay, there we go. So I cut a bit out uh, that big. It doesn't really matter as long as it's enough to go all the way around the shaft. Put it on right at the end. And wrap it around. That's not big enough to go all the way around the shaft, so I'll do another bigger bit. about that much this time. Again, line it up right at the top. And wrap it around. We'll do the same thing on the other end here where it touches. Again, about that much tape. This end, it doesn't want to be right at the end because this little bit needs to sit in the maiden. So I'll put that pulley bearing on so I know where to put it. About there. Okay, take that off. And there we go, the two spots where the flyer will sit on the, uh, where the bobbin will sit on the flyer are far smoother than the rest, so we should have less friction. Put this on, and you can see it's just in the right place at both ends, spins nice and freely. Put this back in its little cradle. Right, I'm going to wrap this later on by hand for the time being because I want to try this with no tension, no brake band on just to see how much noise we've got then I'll play with it a little bit more so again that's pretty good I'm happy with that so I will prepare to spin Let's put this through my yarn guides. I've not got the orifice reducer on, so I'll pop this on now. The only thing you have to uh, be careful with when you've got this is that you don't push it in too hard because as it rotates, it can rub on the front maiden and cause a little bit of noise. So make sure you've got plenty of clearance there. And all of the time we're talking about reducing noise, we're also talking about it make it spin more efficiency, efficiently. Because you don't want it to be wasting all this uh, motor's energy by making banging noises when you could be using the energy for uh, spinning. Okay, I've got a bit of rubbish fibre here, but it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it's just a test. So I'll attach it to my leader. Slip my brake band on. I haven't modified the brake band yet, 
Lots of people have put springs in and put beads on to make it easier to adjust. I haven't found that necessary, though I may do. To make sure it's got lots and lots of slack in it. You don't want too much take up. Uh, it's unnecessary. You don't want it to be pulling it. You want to feed your yarn into the orifice. Let's have a go. Alright, that's a little bit more noisy. But again, it's not bad. Have a look and see what else we can do. So, I've got a little bit of play there. That could be causing some knocking. So what we want to do for that is the same brushed cotton I used before. I can make teeny little washes just to go between there and there. If you don't have anything you can use for a washer, you could use some of this stuff. Super lube. It's what I use on my mini spinner and uh, it works great. It's very, very thick. I'm not going to squeeze much out. Uh, you can kind of see uh, very, very thick and uh, it almost glues the bobbin to the front of the flyer so uh, it doesn't move. It'll just stay in that position. It's lubricated but it doesn't knock backwards and forwards. However, the mini spinner's got a circle of about that much that you can put the glue on. This has got a teeny little area where they join so I think a washer will be more useful. So I'll dismantle this. If you don't want to lose your tension setting don't pull it out just uh, pop it off over the back maiden and then your tension will be the same when you go to put it back on. Right I don't want to unjoin my yarn so I'll keep the bobbin attached. All I've done is cut little circles of this uh, brushed cotton stuff that fit over the flyer. And another one for the other end. There we go. So we've not got any play there now, but it still moves fairly freely. that on, put that on. By the way this mat I've got it on, it's just a little bit of non-stick. It's either shelf liner for putting glasses on or anti-sliding rug grip, I'm not quite sure because someone gave it to me. But it's yeah, thin grippy plastic. It uh, not only stops it sliding around, I imagine it'll dampen any noise vibration quite successfully. There we go, very, very quiet. My take up isn't quite high enough, so let's up that. There we I think for a uh, less than $100 e-spinner that's probably the best you're going to get in terms of uh, volume but it's, uh, it's pretty good and for the money I am incredibly happy with it. I'll try one last thing of uh, putting a bit of super lube on the flyer shaft where the bobbin touches and we'll see if that makes any difference. Very, very, very small amount. I'll take most of that off and put that on that end. And give it a good spin. And put it back together again.
That sounds about the same to me. It might have a slightly high pitched whine here, actually. Seems to be running uh, fine. I do want a little more tension. And check I've not got any snags. Nope. There we go. That's running nice and smoothly, fairly quietly. This is top speed, so it's not the fastest of spinners, but something that fits in the palm of your hand, what more could you want? I hope that's been helpful and uh, it's helped you make your nano slightly less clicky.